partial quotient double digit division. Here I have 9,763 divided by 47. And I'm going to use the partial quotients approach. And then so I could say, okay, well, 100. 100 times 47 is 4,700. So I'll go ahead and use that as part of my partial quotient. 9,763 minus 4,700 is 5,063. And I look at that and I'm all, hey, there's still 4,700 to take away from there. 100 is part of our partial quotient then. 100 times 47 is 4,700. Subtracting the two of those, I get 3, 6, and 3. 363 divided by 47, I might be all, well, let's go ahead and use 5 and take away 5 from there. 5 times 47 from there. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 regroup the 3. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23. And then so I subtract those two numbers from each other. And I'll erase my regroup right now as well. 6 becomes a 5. 3 becomes 13. 13 minus 5 is 8. 5 minus 3 is 2. And 3 minus 2 is 1. I look at that there and I'm all, well, I know 47 is close to 50. And then 50 into 128, that looks like it's 2 times. 2 times 47 as part of my... <clears throat> is 94. And so the 2 becomes part of our answer for our partial quotient. Let's go ahead and subtract those two there. And we get 34. 34 is smaller than 47. So I know I'm done with my partial quotients approach. I just need to figure out the sum of all of these partial quotients so that I have my actual quotient, which will be 207. That's 207 with the remainder of 34. If I expressed it as a mixed number, it would be 207 and 34 47 47 is a prime number, so I know that 207 and 34 47 is in simplest form. The nice thing about this method is that you can't choose anything wrong as a partial quotient as long as you follow those steps correctly, in that you put the partial quotient over there on the right-hand side, and then you multiply the 53 times the 100, or whatever it is that you put for that partial quotient, and then you use a subtraction approach. As long as you continue this process, oh, can't choose 100, but it looks like I can choose something like mm, 50. So I place a zero, and 5 times 3 is 15. 5 regroup the 1. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26. I go ahead and subtract those two, doing any regroups that I need to do. Oops, I didn't need a regroup there. So that's still 1. That would still be a 2, but it needs to be regrouped over here. 3, 10, 9, and the 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. Um, that's a 9. 9 minus 6 is 3, and 3 minus 2 is 1. 1,371 divided by 53. Oh, hmm. I'll go ahead and try 20. That looks like it's okay. 0. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10. And getting closer. 1. 1. And at now, I am down to a 3-digit number divided by 53. I look at that there. And I know it can't be 6, because 53 times 6 is 318, but so I know that it can be 5, though. And so 5 times 53, 5, regroup the 1, 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26, and I subtract the two of those. I get 36 as my answer there, or is it actually 46? <laughs> I was running out of room here to show my work, so I really wanted to just write an answer there. But I second-guessed myself. You know, it is 46. There it is, 46. So 46 is my remainder, is my remainder. I just have to add these partial quotients up, and my remainder is 46. 100, 150, 170, 175. 175, remainder 46. Or I could say 175 and 46 53rds, and that is in simplest form because 53 is a prime number. Alright, it's time for you to try. You see 9,672 and you see 43 as our divisor. You go ahead and try this partial quotients approach for these double digit divisors. Hit pause. You find the quotient for me. You can choose different partial quotients and you would still come up with that same answer as long as you followed the same 
the right steps. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first step there. I see that there still is 4,300 to take away, or 100 times 43 to take away. That's still 4,300. Subtract 2, 7, 0, 1, 1,072 divided by 43. I see, what else do I see? I see at least 10. So 10 times that is 430. I'm going to have to do that again still. 642, up, oh, still 10, 430. And you keep on going until you end up with an answer. At that point, I have 212. And 212 is 4. Because 4 times 43 is 2. Regroup the 1. 4 times 4 is 4, 16. Plus 1 is 17. And so that there is 40. Is 40. 40 is our remainder. I add those up. I left it off to the side just a little bit. That's 100, 200, 210, 220, 224. 224 is our answer with the remainder of 40. 224, remainder 40. Or I can write 224, oops, 224 and 40, 40 thirds. 43 is a prime number, so 40, 40 thirds is in simplest form with that 224. With this approach, it doesn't matter as to how large the um, dividend is. We still follow those same steps. And then so if we look here, we could go ahead and say 800. <laughs> we would place two zeros. The 8 times the 9. The 1 there is 8 times 1 is 8, and 8 times 9 is 72. And I would subtract 2, 3, 7 becomes a 6, 6 becomes 16, 16 minus 8 is 8, 6 minus 2 is 4, and 8 minus 7 is 1. Still looks like a really large number, except at that point I'd be all, oh, look at that. I can just go ahead and do 100, because 100 times 91 is 9,100. And then it'll start getting that dividend that I'm dividing even smaller and smaller, and it'll be easier and easier to be able to see as to how many that partial quotient that's there. I now look at 9 into that 57, concentrating on the tens and the hundreds placed there. 9 goes into 57 six times, so I'm going to go ahead and use 60 here. I'll place the 0. 6 times the 1 is 6. 6 times the 9 is 54. And I subtract again. 2. 7 becomes a 6. 3 becomes 13. 2. 272. Whoops, just missed 3, because 3 times 91 is 273, so I would use 2, and so that would be 182 as my product. Subtract that, and I get 90. Add all of those together, my partial quotients together, and that's the approach for partial quotient division here. 800, 900, 960, 962. So our answer is 962 with the remainder of 90, or we can express that as 962 and 90 91sts. And that's that.